Ah, a free Saturday. Happy days, happy days, happy, happy, happy days. I could really go for an ice cream sandwich. Today I've got another Yuri recommendation. This one is called Azmi-chan is interested in lesbian brothels. Now I was on the fence about clicking it. I mean, it was on Dynasty Scans and judging from the tags. I don't really, you know, I don't usually go out of my way to look for this stuff. However, the art caught my eye. First, if you don't care for my thoughts or some spoilers for only chapter one, you can skip to this number. You know, also, also my dudes, uh, I have to record in this room, so sorry for the echo and everything. It's kind of spacious and there's air conditioning and oh my god, it's, it's not the greatest room, but you know what? I have to. I have to do it in here. Ugh. I love art. It can say a lot, and this one sure did. I thought this was going to be a shit, Yuri, one that I would heavily regret reading, but I was wrong. I was wrong! Okay, again, I would like to talk about the art. I like it a lot because you can see the effort that they put into this, their skill, and the colored pages are done really nicely. We start out with Azumi and her senpai who takes her out to drink since she's legal now. They drink, and her senpai asks her about her love life, and then we're brought to Azumi's past. There's a girl named Mai-chan who I thought was going to be very insignificant in the story. Look, I had very low expectations for this. Asumi tells Oka about Mai, and Oka is just bored as shit. Oka takes Asumi's wallet and sees a picture of Asumi and Mai together. Oka's like, oh, I've, I've seen her, and Asumi's, you know, just after finishing her story, is obviously still curious about Mai and is eager to know where. Where did she see her? The Ho just casually says, a brothel? And from here, it just gets better. Oka decides to celebrate Asumi's adulthood by reserving her a slot at the brothel. Asumi's, you know, Rightfully so, freaking out. She's got questions, and I guess the most important one is, aren't those for men? But we got our girl Oka, and she's like, nah, dude, we good. And you know why? Because it's a lesbian brothel. Oh, well, how convenient for a manga such as this. Thank you. They go back and forth a bit with the idea of Osmi going to the brothel and who she'll end up with. Uh, turns out, Oka is a goddamn expert in this field, and she owns it. Is there, like, a master's for this? Oh, look. Oka tells her it'll be her treat since it's her birthday, and Osmi says, Your treat? No, I couldn't. What? Bitch, if my friend did this to me, I'd kill them! Well, the rest of the chapter is Osmi meeting up with the escort. It's pretty nice. It does show some 18-plus material. Okay, Toko. Eh, but it's hot, and Osmi enjoys it. Towards the end of the chapter, she meets back up with Olka and they talk. Some nice comedy goes on. But what made me even more interested was what happened at the end of the chapter. As to what I've read so far, I have heavily enjoyed it. Maybe my expectations were really low when I went in, and that's why I like it, but, 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 but the art, the comedy, and the actual plot mixes well together. I like the characters. Asami, she's out to herself, and Olka, so possibly her family. She's timid and has an innocent personality, which makes the pages fun to read when she's in it. Olka, what a shitbag, you know, but still an awesome friend. She's also got some shady stuff going on, but you know what, she moves, she moves things. The escorts, I like them. I don't think they're bad people, they're just doing their job, and they enjoy it, and they want their clients to enjoy themselves as well. Team Aina, anyone? As for Izumi, uh, nah, -uh. abuse. Abuse of power, casting couch. The rest of the story is Osmi fantasizing about Mai during both her free time and the time spent during reservations with these escorts. All at the same time, she's quite heavily enjoying this woman as well. The story is fun. It's spicy. Again, the art? Hot. Yes. Thank you. While I believe this to be true, I'm also confident that there may be a high goal of this manga. A lot of us remember parts of our childhood, our teen years. There are parts that we hope to forget and memories we love. Memories we cringe at and memories that ultimately spring us into action, which is what happens here. The decision to act, to take motion. It's amazing how we look to our past, a moment in time where we thought nothing of it until one day we do. We're so caught up in our own perspectives, our own lives, and we feel like all in ourselves is one-sided. What I love about this story so far is how it incorporates different views. It's not solely just the pursuit to understand yourself, but the other person in front of you. Are there truly second chances? 
Once people have seemingly left your life and there's really no way to contact them, is the end of that relationship absolute? Do we allow it to be? While Ozmi is not quite sure if she will ever meet Mai, she's unconsciously making moves in this great game. Look now, I'm acting like the series is 50 chapters in when it's only 5. I'm definitely going to keep up with this one, so long as it doesn't get axed. This manga, if the author plays the right cards, could be wholesome, and I really love ones which hit me. They make me think of my past, my childhood. I get feelings of nostalgia and how my interactions with others may have affected them. Sometimes I think kill myself. Anyway, so please, read this with me. Okay, goodbye. It's time to go. Kawakoa out.